In breaking news tonight at 10, Mizzou has hired a new athletic director. Desiree Reed Francois will take over for Jim Sterk, who recently agreed to step down. ABC 17 sports director Andrew Kaufman joins us now in studio. Andrew, UM System President Moon Choi called this a transformation day for Mizzou Athletics. Desiree Reed Francois is Mizzou's first ever female athletic director. She's also the first woman to hold an AD job at an SEC public institution. Reed Francois comes to Columbia after spending four years as the athletic director at UNLV. This will be her second athletic director job, but she has more than 25 years of experience in college athletics, including stops at Virginia Tech, Cincinnati, and Tennessee. She actually oversaw the Volunteers men's basketball team when Mizzou basketball coach Conzo Martin was the head coach of the Vols beginning in 2011. During her time at UNLV, she oversaw the construction of more than $70 million worth of facility upgrades. And released from Mizzou, she says, quote, the University of Missouri is a world-class academic institution with a strong commitment to athletics and a resolve to further enhance its athletics programs to achieve elite national status is all of our endeavors. Reed Francois has a unique connection to a former member of the Mizzou football staff. ABC 17's Natalie Jones will have that story coming up on SportsZone. Andrew, thank you. Now turning to weather as the next two days will be weather alert days here at ABC 17 News as the StormTrack weather team is tracking extreme heat in the area. We're going to send things over to StormTrack forecaster Chance Gotch. And Chance, we're looking at some dangerously high temperatures and humidity on top of that. Yeah, Chanel, definitely going to be pretty hot for the next upcoming work week. But first, we've got to get through a few lingering showers throughout Central Missouri. Now these showers earlier we saw a little bit of power notch to them down in Rolla, but the second round that they're going to be seeing following the I-44 corridor looking a little bit weaker. Now with these storms, just going to expect maybe some strikes of lightning and some brief downpours. Now this is going to continue to follow the I-44 corridor, so Rolla, you're in line once again for some more rain. Not going to be too much here in Columbia. Most of that's going to say south of Columbia. Take a look at the ABC 17 storm track future track. A little bit less widespread than earlier. Those cloud cover is going to keep pushing. We're going to see a little bit more redevelopment heading into the morning. But by mid-morning, those storms and showers start to push out of the area. We're left with a little bit of cloud cover and heading off into the afternoon. It's going to be mostly clear. Now those temperatures are going to slowly start to uptake. By 6 a.m., starting out at 72 degrees. 8 a.m., 74 degrees. By 10 a.m., already hitting back into the 80s. Now we're going to be at 83 degrees once those clouds start lifting. There's just no end to those temperatures. Now, Vandalia looking pretty warm tomorrow at around 3 p.m., 96 degrees. Those heat indexes going to be climbing to above 100 degrees in Vandalia, Columbia, and Brunswick. So definitely going to be a warmer time. We start heading towards 6 p.m. Starts cooling down a little bit. Sun starts going down. Get a little bit of a brief pause. Then we head back into that warm. So if you're going to be outdoors tomorrow afternoon, want to take your dog for a walk, I would suggest doing it early in the morning or late at night just because it's going to be so warm and those surfaces tend to heat up a lot faster. It's not good for your dog's paws. Now looking at the 6 to 10 day forecast, going to be warmer than average here in central Missouri. That trend's going to continue even further out looking up into my next forecast. We'll talk about that more. Now we are in that weather alert day for Monday and Tuesday. That trend doesn't start coming down until about Thursday night into Friday. Those temperatures are still going to be in the lower 90s, but by Friday, Start cooling down. We're hitting the average mark in central Missouri for early August. And Saturday and Sunday start dipping down below. We're going to be in the mid 80s for the high. Looking mostly sunny heading off into next weekend. Warning sirens in Callaway and Cole counties will now sound during severe storm warnings with a destructive tag. A destructive tag includes baseball size hail and or 80 miles per hour winds. This is the same change to warning sirens that happened in Boone County last week. The National Weather Service says on average only 10% of all severe thunderstorms reach the destructive level each year. The Columbia Chamber of Commerce sent a letter to the City Council regarding a possible business mask mandate. The letter advocates for city businesses asking that they not be responsible for enforcing a new mask order. ABC 17's Layla Mitchell is live after checking in with downtown Columbia businesses about the current mask status. Layla, some businesses in Columbia still feel strongly about enforcing masks. Yes, Chanel, while most businesses I spoke with today told me they leave it up to the individual customer whether they want to wear a mask or not, one business I spoke to told me they're not taking the masks off until the pandemic is over. We have a crisis on our hands and our city council needs to 
adopt a mask mandate ASAP. Mark Hyam, director of Mid-Missouri PeaceWorks, told me masks have been required in Peace Nooks since they reopened from quarantine in June 2020. We're concerned about the health of our staff, our volunteers, and our customers, and we would like to see the pandemic ended as soon as possible. Wearing masks is a positive step. The letter from the Chamber of Commerce says they must make known the numerous concerns from the business community about enforcing a mask mandate, saying, quote, businesses do not have the added workforce needed to enforce a mask mandate, and it becomes a workforce issue when businesses are required to use their limited and taxed staff to enforce mandates on their customers. Patently ridiculous. The fact that they're short staff doesn't affect how many people uh, they can in form of a mask mandate when they come in. So we see people come in the door whether they're wearing a mask or not, and we ask them to put a mask on if they don't have one on, and we give them one for free if they need one. Some businesses in Columbia, like Alpine Shop, are leaving the mask decision up to the customer. For customers, we ask that if you aren't vaccinated that you wear a mask, but we don't force anything. Uh, same goes for employees. That either way, it's your choice. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we're kind of letting the customers decide what they feel comfortable with. And Columbia City Council is set to make a decision on mandating masks tomorrow night. For now, reporting live in downtown Columbia, Layla Mitchell, ABC 17 News. Layla, thank you. And like she just said, the Columbia City Council will hold a meeting to vote on a mask mandate tomorrow night. In order to go through, the council will need six of the seven members to vote in favor of the order. If passed, it would require everyone five and older to wear masks if they are within six feet of other people. A few days ago, Columbia Mayor Brian Treese told ABC 17 News he feels that everyone should be getting vaccinated and that the city is going to follow the guidance and advice of Columbia's public health professionals. If passed, the mandate would last 30 days unless it's changed by another order. If you're looking to get vaccinated in Cole County this week, there are multiple vaccine locations available. These locations are the ones that you can see on your screen now, including Capital Care Pharmacy, the Community Health Center of Central Missouri, the Health Department, JCMG, and SSM St. Mary's Hospital. Most locations have availability Monday through Friday, with the exception of the Cole County Health Department, which only has openings on Thursday. Most locations offer the Pfizer vaccine, with some offering Moderna, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson as well. For more information on vaccine locations and hours, you can visit the Cole County Health Department's website at colecounty.org. Columbia wrapped up their bicentennial celebrations today with the last day of its Together for 21 Fest. Today's festivities included a tree dedication, quilt exhibition, as well as many performances and presentations. Organizers say all attendees were required to follow the University of Missouri's COVID-19 guidelines. This comes, however, as Boone County's positivity rates sits at just above 32 percent, compared to 7.6 percent at the same time last year. The state will continue bicentennial celebrations next week at the annual state fair, with the fair making a full return this year after hosting a modified version in 2020 due to the pandemic. The city of Ashland will hold a special meeting tomorrow. It's to discuss a lawsuit filed last week by two residents to stop the construction of an entertainment development. Like we've reported, the suit claims the Board of Aldermen approved a permit for Lakeside Ashland, despite the request to put it on hold. They are calling for the Board of Adjustment to discuss the project before it moves forward. Just ahead on ABC 17 News at 10, where the news comes first. One Chicago police officer is dead and another one is seriously hurt after a shooting in the city last night. We'll tell you how it all went down after the break.